This lecture we'll be looking at shaded pole motors. Shaded pole motors are a unique type of motor which is used in a certain number of small uh, fractional kilowatt applications, specialized applications that take advantage of its low energy consumption. So as you can see from the, from the pictures that are on screen, uh, shaded pole motors generally are small motors, right? So you would have on one side, uh, you have the winding and the power supply. This is still a th uh, 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 an AC motor. So you would still have your winding on one side with a power supply uh, to that particular winding. But it is interesting in that the rotor itself is not connected electrically to the uh, main uh, winding. And an interesting, another interesting part of the shaded coil or shaded pole motor are these two loops, which you can see here. These two sets of loops, which are called, called the shaded parts of the pole. As you can see from the construction, you have two poles. Let's call this a north, let's call that a south for the sake of uh, convenience. And you would always have uh, opposite poles whether it is north or whether it is south the poles would always be opposite to each other on opposite sides of the uh, stator okay this particular core is uh, consists of laminations uh, just like any other electrical motor and of course you have your rotor mounted on bearings which are not in, uh, shown in the picture but they are hidden within those mountings uh, and the rotor is free to rotate and you can connect your load to the shaft. So let's look a bit about at the uh, diagram itself. So diagrammatically, you can see what we have indicated is an AC supply that is connected to a coil that is mounted on a core. And you can see that you would then have uh, that AC supply creating a magnetic field that would pass through the entire core and circulate within the confines of the machine itself and it is that magnetic field that is set up from the ac supply that passes through the rotor but that magnetic field is modified by the copper shading rings which we had seen in the photo right those shading rings play a critical role in the operation of the machine itself then of course you have uh, the rotor in this case in this case you have a squirrel cage type of uh, rotor indicated although you can still have wire wound uh, rotors right no commutators here uh, there is no electrical connection to between the stator and the rotor you can see the windings are purely on the stator side right uh, and there's a laminated core uh, as I have already indicated. Fixing holes, these are very small machines. Uh, so you can see the fixing hole is what we're talking about here. Those provide a mounting for the rotor and also they enable the machine to be uh, connected to its uh, uh, load. Right. So let's look at the principle of operation of this shaded pole um, machine. So when you apply an AC to this uh, machine, it takes the form indicated here, right? So we will look at the various points along the waveform of the AC and we will look at each of those points and how the magnetic field is created at all of those points as we move along uh, in time. So this is current and this is time. So let's take the case of the time at point A. So let's zoom out a bit. On the right hand side, we have a representation of one of the poles of the machine. So at instant A, you have from the point of the origin where the waveform started, you have an increasing or a rising value of current, right? And you know that as a current changes, as a current tends to increase, you would have a magnetic field that grows out of that okay 
so as that magnetic field increases yeah it is being set up and it is growing due to the fact that the value of the current is also increasing the magnitude of that current is increasing along a certain direction you would then tend to assume that the magnetic field which is indicated by these dashed lines the magnetic field would increase throughout the whole of the uh, pole however in the case of your shaded pole motors, one section of the machine or one section of the face of the pole is shaded using a coil as we have indicated here. So we can see here we have one single coil of copper that is applied on one side, not from the diagram, it is only on one side of the winding uh, or rather of the face of the pole. So the diagram that we are talking about, we are looking at this section here, all right? So that is what we are looking at on this side. So now, if you have a magnetic field that is increasing, but you have a coil which can have a, a, a current induced in it and flow in it, what then happens? What happens is because this is a copper conductor into which a current is being induced by the fact that you have a growing magnetic field uh, increasing in value around it. Remember that this coil, the, the loop of the shaded pole is not connected to any other part, all right? It is not connected to the stator. It has no power supply of its own. That means that you start to have a current flowing in it in a certain direction, all right? You have current flowing inside that loop isolated from the rest of the machine and insulated from it because it is mounted on a laminated core, so it is insulated from the rest of it. What that means is you have now a current flowing in this loop which also in turn sets up its own magnetic field that tends to now oppose the initial magnetic field that caused it. So you have the situation whereby on one side of the face of the pole, you have a magnetic field that is increasing and it will continue to increase because your current is also increasing. But on this particular area, you now have the situation whereby because we have applied a current carrying coil, that current carrying coil induces a magnetic field that opposes or cancels out the magnetic field that is already existing and that is continuing to grow within the face of the pole. So the resultant value of that is on one side you have a high value, value of magnetic field and here you have a low value of magnetic field simply because the shading coil is reducing or cancelling out the value of the magnetic field, all right? So that is what is happening at instant from zero to A as you have your growing magnetic field. What happens at instant B, right? At instant B, you have no growth, all right? You are tending to have the same uh, current flowing through, right? There's no, the rate of change of the current has reduced to zero. And that is indicated on diagram number three here. We will come to number four shortly. So in the case of diagram number four here, you have a magnetic field that is uh, remaining stable. It is uniform. So at this side, you have a uniform magnetic field. On the face that is unshaded, which is here, the unshaded side, you have a uniform magnetic field. But what happens where we have our shading coil once again? The shading coil performs in the same way that it performed before. It resists whatever change or lack thereof is happening around it in terms of magnetic field. So whereas on the right hand side this is uniform, on the uh, shaded side you tend to have a boost in the magnetic field. That is, it is uh, tending to increase the value of the magnetic field that is there simply because the current that is flowing through it resists that, okay? 
Then now we have on this uh, time scale from here to here, let's call it region C. In region C, we then have a decreasing value of magnetic field. It is shrinking. In quotes. Okay. So what does that mean when we have our shaded coil here? The shaded coil, once again, continues to do what it has been doing, which is to resist or to oppose the uh, change that is causing it, right? That is essentially what the coil is doing. So here, whereby you have a low value of magnetic field throughout the rest of the pole, under the influence of the shaded coil, you would then have a high magnetic field, which is trying to boost once again the uh, magnetic field that was shrinking, but it is trying to increase it. So you tend to have a higher magnetic field on this side. Okay. And then similarly, you would continue the same all the way down to uh, that portion and the same down to here. Now, what would happen if we call this D and we call that E and we call that F, what then happens is you have resulting magnetic fields that are distorted distorted through the action of the shaded coil and the current that is induced within that shaded coil. So a distorted magnetic field across the face of the pole. And in essence, if we were to draw the resultant magnetic fields that were present in each of these instances, So if this represents a cross section of our machine with the rotor shown there, you would then have, as we have seen before, a magnetic field flowing and continuing all the way through under the action of your AC uh, power supply that creates uh, a magnetic field. And let's assume uh, our magnetic field goes, say, in this direction. Okay. So now what would happen if we are at instant A, all right? We said that our shaded poles, let's just indicate them here. So our shaded pole is here, and the other one is here, right? Slightly different from the photo, but let's just indicate them as we have shown them on this side, right? So you have your shaded poles indicated as that way. Now, here we tend to have at the location of the shaded pole, on this side, it is low. On this side, the concentration of the pole is, of the magnetic field is high, okay? So you have magnetic field in that direction and in that direction. Here it is high, here it is low. Uh, here it is high and here it is low. That means that the resultant magnetic field within the confines of this rotor, let me erase it so that it is a bit clearer within the confines of this rotor at instant A, you would then have a resultant magnetic field that is distorted, right? What ends up is you have something that looks like that. Okay, it tends to be slightly distorted and skewed in that direction from the high side to the high side on this side because the action of the shade itself is to reduce in the case of part number A, okay? If we look at instant B, whereby we then have, uh, say, let's indicate that here. We draw it here. Uh, same thing, we have our magnetic field going through this way under the action of our Uh, supply. In this case, we would tend to have a uniform magnetic field all the way through the rotor in the direction indicated. So this is instant B. And if we come across here to instant C, we then have a similar thing. But now we note that 
on this side because of the action that we have described we have high magnetic field and on the opposing sides we have low magnetic fields so the distortion of the magnetic field tends to be in that direction there is a resultant magnetic field generally in the direction that is shown okay so here we have covered a b and c so let's look at d e and f so d in this case here we would note that the shaded pole is the same however the direction of the ac is opposite all right if we were to call this positive resulting in a magnetic field as we have seen here the direction flowing that way in the case of d the direction flows in the opposite or rather the current flows in the opposite direction which means that the uh, the shaded po uh, coils opposing the magnetic field so that would be low and the other one would be low this is high and this is also high so that means that our magnetic field is distorted in the direction indicated if we look at timeline e which is similar to b we would then have a situation that would be similar to b except that your direction of magnetic field is downwards and finally if we look at f which is increasing but in the still in the negative uh, side of the wave here you have the shaded poles boosting in quotes the value of the magnetic field so that in that direction is where we would have the uh, resultant magnetic field so what does this indicate if you look at each of those at point a the magnetic field is uh, kind of let's indicate them here so at a magnetic field is there at b magnetic field is there which is what we had shown c it is now towards the i can call that north northwest like that d at d you now have in the downward direction but towards the left you have it there e is down like that and f is in that direction so what this means is you have a pseudo almost rotating magnetic field similar to what you had gotten what we had gotten in induction motors yeah in the three phase induction motors we rely on the rotating magnetic field to create a torque all right and an interesting question to ponder is is this an induction motor <laughs>